Hello, day 11. And um, a lot, a lot, a lot of what I'm thinking about lately is the fact that what sets us up for our relationships, what sets us up in our lives, what sets us up in our responses and everything is not only our conditioning, because our conditioning, or rather the conditioning is happening not only on the level of the mindset, right? It's not only our beliefs and thoughts we think, it's actually coded into our nervous system. This is what is so incredibly complicated about the work that I'm doing on my own and you know, as I guide other people, because it's not only about changing, so not only about understanding where we come from and how what we've witnessed has shaped our outlook on life, set us up for certain patterns, set us up for certain beliefs, set us up for certain assumptions and expectations about life that we think is reality and it's actually not. And, and then what makes it even more complicated as we, as we start allowing ourselves to think different thoughts, and we start correcting our worldview, not correcting, like let's say expanding. What's happening then is we're bumping up against our own coded, these, these things that are in our mind, they're also coded in our body. So what's coded in our body is the familiarity of what it felt like to be me, for example, as a child, right? So one of the things that I am dealing with these days is that I've, you know, I'm a business owner today. I am an entrepreneur. I am a coach. And all these things are definitely out of my habitual comfort zone. So although I had to break through so many limitations, like mental beliefs about who I am and what I'm capable of in order to get here, right? to make myself visible, to open my mouth and start saying what I'm thinking, to then make myself go public with my ideas and give myself permission for all that. And then, you know, understanding what my, what my wisdom is worth and what my capacities are worth and then charging money for my wisdom. You know, all this stuff, like so many, 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 many layers of conditioning had to be broken through in order to get here and yet what I'm what I'm dealing with now is that it's more than just um, mental it's also in my body and the and the the difficulty with that is that the baseline the default setting as I call it it keeps on dragging me back so every time I am stressed or every time something is not going the way that would have made it easy for me, I go back to the, the pool of that older version of me is still so prevalent. It's actually blowing my mind. And, and I think in the last two months, you know, as, as I was sharing that I've been going through such a difficult time, I think I've been going through such a difficult time because in my, you know, last year was an incredible growth spurt for me. And I assumed that all this other stuff that like, that's it, I've, I'm done with that. And it was left behind. But what I'm, what I'm realizing is that what I've realized in the last two months is that as I say, you know, because this journey is spiral, I actually went and, and met that place of, of smallness and limitation and fear. And I'd forgotten, I'd literally forgotten how powerful I've become and how powerful actually I always was, right? So this is what the work is that you don't get to a mountaintop and then that's it, smooth sailing. It's constant daily interaction with all these other parts of who I am, right? So next to my powerful business owner, me, 
there is my inner child who still feels, you know, criticized and unworthy and, and scared. And for every empowered part of who I am, there is a disempowered part. That's just the nature of it, right? There is, we, ha we are everything, we are whole. So whatever there is on the spectrum of empowerment, there is a counterbalance to that. So all these parts are constantly interacting. And, um, you know, sometimes the, the empowered one has the say, and sometimes the disempowered one. And I didn't even realize how far into disempowerment I had fallen into again these last several, you know, almost two months. and. It's been incredibly difficult and I'm just now starting to come back onto the surface and sort of like looking back, sort of regaining the perspective of higher entity, looking back and understanding what I've been dealing with. And um, so, yeah, so, you know, what I've been wanting to say is that it's so, the work is, it requires incredible dedication and <clears throat> just reading a few books is not going to do it and um, even you know even even working with a guide if you're not doing the work of actually going within and looking at things that are difficult to look at nobody can help you so that's what I'm facing you know I because I was working with a business coach for 12 months and before that I was working with a business coach one-on-one -on -one, and before that I was in a container for six months and yet the ultimate work I mean people can tell you you can read books you can hear all kinds of affirmations but ultimately the work is within and we do need guides, right? We do need other people to sort of mirror where we are and to show us our blind spots. But ultimately it's going and doing the dirty work of rewiring our nervous system, healing the trauma responses and um, adaptations and getting into a relationship with all these different parts of who we are so that we so that we can see when we, you know, when we are falling into the disempowered modes and can correct it. That's the work. There is no magic formula. Although life is so, so magical. Oh my God, every day practically, you know, you, the universe is really collaborating with me and is, you know, infinitely patient with me because it keeps on showing me all these incredible miracles about who I am and where I'm going and where what my path is, and I keep on wanting more and more proof. Rewiring mind and body is so complicated because sometimes it feels like you know you're going crazy. Because it's really where you know what I'm dealing with is I'm really learning to live in a completely different reality than the reality for which I was prepared. For, you know, we live in a, in a vastly more powerful and incredible reality than the one that we were raised for. And this is what, you know, requires so much of commitment and constant, constant presence and vigilance not to fall back into what's easy and what's habitual. Because actually, it's not even easy anymore, right? Because when I fall back into my default setting, it feels horrible. Because it's not, I now know that it's not my truth. It's not my truth to be that small, disempowered person. It's just not my truth. I know how much more I can be, and I've already proven it to me many times. But the scared inner child just wants more and more proof. Anyway, this is what I'm going through today. And I feel like there's so much that's gonna be happening now as I'm getting these things straight. Um, and I'll be back tomorrow. Let's see where this takes me. <laughs>